Hello everyone, it's Maria here from Pebbly Rose Paper Crafting. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Sydney, Australia. Thank you so much for joining me and today I'm going to be um, doing a video at the request of two viewers of mine. They each had different requests, however I'm going to combine their requests with the one video because I think this is perfect. So, um, I was asked to make a masculine birthday card so I thought it is perfect to use the geared up garage and I have to be honest I have not inked the stamp nor have I used the thinlets since I bought it so this is a fantastic opportunity to do that as well as I'm going to be using an unusual card size so I was also asked to um, show how to use the envelope punch board so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a card and a matching envelope with the, en um, the envelope punch board. So we'll get started on the project. Uh, to start off with, I've got a piece of Whisper White thick cardstock. It is cut at four inches across by eight inches down. And I'm, I've already burnished the score, uh, sorry, scored the score line. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to grab my bone folder and burnish that score line. It looks like that. I'll just give it a good burnish to make sure it really sticks down. Just make sure it really sticks down. Okay. This is actually not going to be having many layers. So this will be it. I'll just make sure I didn't do that properly. Make sure I give it a good burnish. There we go. <laughs> All done. <laughs> so um, I've got a piece of Whisper White Thick cardstock, And to start off with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the oil slick image that we've got there, like the oil stain. And I'm just going to stamp it just along here, um, just in random places. But I'm going to concentrate all of my images towards the left-hand side. Very simple card to make, um, so I'm just putting full strength uh, like so. That looks really nice actually on just Whisper White cardstock. Really dirty looking, I'm going to do like that and like that and I think like that too, why not? Then I'm going to use the bolts image from there and I'm going to use basic grey for that one. So I just gave that stamp a clean and now I'm going to use the bolts full strength at uh, just randomly stamp it here, there and everywhere. <laughs> stamp it. And you can see that close up. That looks really cool. I love that. I did not think, as always, when I do these videos, I actually have an idea, but I don't know 100% what I will end up with. So I do this on the fly. So yeah, <laughs> let's see how this turns out. It'll be interesting. All right. So whilst um, that's just drying off a little bit, what I'm going to grab is my Stamparatus and I'm going to use it for a couple of things just to be sure with my images going to grab a piece of uh, uh, Whisper White cardstock there, just a scrap piece, and I'm going to grab the car image from there and just carefully peeled off. These are the new uh, cling stamps that we have. Um, and what's so great about them is they really do cling onto your card stock. Let's try to do it this way so I don't waste a lot of cardstock. I'm all for um, preserving cardstock as much as possible. So I'm just going to now ink up my car image there with Memento Tuxedo Black. Make sure I ink it up really well. And Memento is my favorite um, ink of all time. 
I'm just going to wipe that off. It seems like there's a bit of film from the factory, so I'll just give that a bit of a wipe off, and then I'll do it again. Let's see how that works. A bit better. All right, cool. So stamp that on. And for intricate images such as these, I do like to use the Stamparatus just to be sure. And I might ink it up again. I want to make sure those wheels look really black and not um, kind of splotchy. Just concentrate mainly on the wheels. And I'll bring that up close. I think that that looks okay, so I'll leave it at that. That's why I like using the Stamparatus for things like that. And then I'm going to um, take that off very slowly because it is very sticky. So as you will treat your photo polymer stance where you're very careful with how you take it off, you do the same with this. Um, yeah, that way you don't rip it off. Now I'm going to put a sentiment here and it says all geared up to celebrate. I think that's perfect for a um, birthday sentiment. And I've got a, a piece here of some scrap um, basic black cardstock. So I'm just going to stick that to the bottom there. Um, it's not an even piece, but um, I don't care. Um, it doesn't have to be overly precise. I'm just going to use the uh, magnet really strong and I'm just going to add the sentiment down the bottom here let's see if that wow that is strong all right let's put that down the bottom here it's sticking to my finger okay and I'm going to use the embossing buddy on that part and I'm going to get my Versamark ink pad and ink that stamp up and we're going to just stamp that there looks like it's stamped all right then I'm going to just clean that off Take that off very, very slowly. Put that away. I like to put all of my stamps away after I finish using them to ensure I don't stuff it up. <laughs> and then I'm going to get the um, whisk white embossed powder. I was going to call it whisper white embossing powder, but it's just white embossing powder. And I'm going to add some onto the black cardstock here. Add a little bit more. Okay. Okay, that looks good. So what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to head emboss it and I'll be back. Okay, so I've just finished now um, head embossing that on some black cardstock. I will be trimming that off, okay, but uh, I'll leave it for the time being for it to cool down. In the meantime, we're going to bring back, bring, bring back our stamped um, image of the car. And what we're going to do is we're going to color that image in. Now, there are many ways of coloring this image in. You can use your stamp and write markers. You can use your blends. Um, you can use any other alcohol type markers. Um, or you can use watercolor pencils, which is what I'm going to do. It's my preferred way of coloring. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to color this image with the colors I like. And I tend to use colors that are very similar to stampin up colors. So these are my watercolor pencils.
<laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my big shot. Okay, so I've got my thin die adapter. I'm going to get out my framelits from the garage gears framelit dies, and I'm going to use the one for the car, which is down here. And I'm just going to um, position that so it covers all of the car. And I didn't even have to do that background stamp um, shading, which is silly. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Because I forgot I was going to cut it out. So I'm just going to grab some painter's tape. Just pop that on there. And then with that same piece of cardstock, I'm going to cut out these gears. And just pop that on here. Then I'm going to pop this through the big shot. And I'll do that a couple of times because of the intricate die. Okay, and that's it with the big shot. Take off everything. So now I'll take off the car. Just carefully take off the painter's tape. Oops. Careful with the painter's tape. I've, I've used this um, several times actually. It still works great. So there is my cut out of the car. I think that looks great. And that's just as an idea. Isn't that cool? Love that. Um, just pop that back. Oops. And then I'm going to um, undo this. And I'll just grab my die brush. Just give me a moment. So I've just got my die brush and I'm going to just run that all over. Try and get that all off. Okay, there are some bits that are a little bit stubborn, so I'm just going to grab my craft pick. And I'm going to take off the bits that are a little bit stubborn. Like, there's not much effort, but sometimes I need a little bit of extra help. And I'll just take off the little bits that are stuck on here. That's it, no biggie. All done. Alright, just put this away so I don't lose it. Alrighty, so what I'll do is I'll bring over my card. And I'm going to put the gears on top like it's that. I think it looks really cool like that. So put the gears on top. Then I'm going to add the car like that. And the sentiment, I'm going to have it up here, but I'm going to cut this down. So um, I'm going to try and straighten that up because I did a really botched job with that. So I'll just grab my um, trimmer. Go as straight as possible. Oops. Okay, and then... I'll kind of um, try and straighten that. Well, that looks pretty not straight, but I'll get a piece of painter's tape for that too. And then I'll just give it a trim. Now I just moved it, but. Now, 
I completely botched this up. However, I'm thinking to myself, why not have the sentiment kind of look a little distressed? So, sometimes we have these happy accidents. And I don't mind now that it kind of looks distressed, but I'll give it a little trim. And then what I'm going to do is get my scissors and give it a good rough up the other way. Like that, towards me. So now that the sentiment looks like that, a little bit distressed. And I think that adds a really nice touch. So I'll pop that here. Mm. Kind of a bit like that. Yeah, all right, I'll do it this way. I think it looks better that way. So I'll just grab my tweezers and I'm going to put some glue all over the gears. Just, um, yeah, I use my liquid glue. You can also use um, the adhesive sheets that we sell too. You can make this into a sticker. So you don't have to sit there with the glue and just go crazy like this. But it's up to you, just, just as an idea. Stick that down and then we'll put that over there. Then I'll stick the car here like that and with this I'm just going to stick that up there like so. Okay so I'll just get my glue, I'll use my tweezers it's easier. Just get my glue and I'll just stick some glue on the back. I just dot it. Stick that over the top. I don't care if it gets rid of the gear a little bit, doesn't worry me. Like that. Just give it a minute and I'll just stick that right down. And then I'm just going to add the car over the top. You can stick that up with dimensionals, but this is great to mail through if you want to. And I'll just stick it over the top and make it kind of flat. So I think that looks pretty cool. And then um, for the inside, we can stamp like a little, um, I'll just bring this out here. And what we can stamp is a, we can stamp the grease stain. But I'm going to stamp off and then stamp on there just very lightly. And then with the basic grey, I'm going to use the bolts image here and stamp off that one and just put that there. So that's the inside of the card all done. I love the way that turned out. So that's, that's my birthday card, the masculine birthday card. I think that looks really lovely. I, I quite like that. So that looks really cool. And now we are on to the uh, part where we make a matching envelope. Now with the four by, um, this is a four by four card, okay. I don't think that you can mail this very easily, this size um, in uh, Australia. Um, you need, I think, to put it into an A6 envelope which we, it will fit quite easily into an A6 envelope. Um, if I'm wrong, please let me know. But uh, from what I understand, um, if you do email an unusual size, you will get charged a little bit more for it. So I tend to put smaller cards into uh, an A6 size envelope. However, if you're going to give this as part of a gift personally, you can make a custom sized card uh, envelope to go with this card and um, because this is a 4x4 card I'm going to get the envelope punch board 
you will see on the envelope punch board, if you're not familiar with it, there are many sizes. So they say if your card size is, say, here, 4x4, four four, we've got that there, you need to cut a paper size that's 6 and 7 eighth inches by 6 and 7 eighth inches. And you score on the 3.5 mark. So what I do, what I've already done in advance is I have cut a piece of just copy paper and that's at 6 and 7 eighths by 6 and 7 eighths. Now what you need to do is when you put your cardstock, I mean your piece of cardstock or paper here, you'll need to score as it says there on the 3.5 mark. So you get your piece of paper and you roll it up to the 3.5 mark there. See like that? Alright, so position that there well, then you punch, use your scoring tool and you score down like that. Then you don't need to keep lining up to the three and a half mark but all you need to do is that once you have that score line you will need to line it up with that, that little mark there. So as it says there go the score line. So we've got the score line, we're going to line that up and you push the paper right to the edge of that. So as you can see, like so, make it more in the middle, all right, you punch and score and then you keep doing that, punch and score and do it one more time. So you do that all around after you've lined that up initially, punch and score. So now you are finished with the scoring of your envelope. So what you need to do then is score is to burnish the score lines. And you do it like that. Now, if you don't like the pointy parts of this um, envelope, you can round the corners. Now, this is a non-stampin' up one, but it's the same company that makes it. This is a We Are Memory Keepers board. They're, they're the company that makes it. I bought this before it came up with stampin' up, so I'm not going to buy another one just because it's got the stampin' up colours on it. It's exactly the same. So, anyway, what you'll do then is you just punch up here and it gives you a corner rounder. So I'm going to round all of the corners. Oops, I didn't do that one properly. Do that again. And again. <laughs> didn't do that properly, so do that again. That's better. All right. So that's the envelope punch board. Really cool, especially for, um, you know, making these kinds of sizes of envelopes unusual sizes. So what I'm going to do is I am going to now stick the sides down in a way that it looks presentable. So I'm going to do it this way, right? Like that. So what I'm going to do is just add glue right on the ends here. And I'm just going to stick that down. In the meantime, just, just burnish those score lines a little bit more. Make sure they're nice and neat. Alright, so that's your custom envelope already done. Now, we need to decorate this envelope. So, I'm going to put a piece of paper down here. I'm just going to get my grease stain stamp. Stamp off. And then I'm just going to stamp it all over this like so then I'm going to grab my basic grey and get the bolts images there stamp off and do that okay and one more like that so now we have a personalised decorated envelope and that's the flap at the back. 
Okay, so now that we've got our envelope all sorted, here at the front you can actually put at full strength, I'm going to do that here, here's just some bolts on each of the corners on opposite sides. So now that all matches. Isn't that cool? So yeah, this is your custom envelope. So now let's test out the envelope with this card and it fits absolutely perfect. Okay. So um, I hope you enjoyed today's uh, tutorial. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. You can buy the envelope punch board through me at pebblyrose.stampinup.net. won't be in these colours, but it will be in the Stampin' Up! colours if you haven't already gotten them. Um, and if you haven't used it for a while, it's a great opportunity to make cards of different sizes and just go crazy <laughs> um, making nice color, you know, nice custom envelopes. The Geared Up Garage uh, bundle is fabulous. I highly recommend it. If you haven't got it, it makes a great, um, a great, uh, you know, mail, you know, bundle for cards and even for females that love cards. I know I do, so I wouldn't mind this in like pinks and other colours you can go crazy with the combinations and it's great that you can cut out all of these images with the matching framelit dies. So yeah, um, if you have any questions don't hesitate to let me know but uh, Natalie and C. Hill, these is, uh, this is for you. I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Everyone else as well, if you have any questions at all or you have any suggestions for any kind of projects please uh, leave a comment below and I'll be more than happy to accommodate. So I'll just give you a close-up of that card. I think it turned out wonderful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye!